team bang. And we're back for game number two of this best of three. Alliance taking on Fnatic. Alliance getting a very quick win under their belt in game number one. And now just one more win away from punching their ticket to Shanghai. Fnatic going to have to get it together and get it together quick if they want to keep their hopes alive. However, whichever team does come up short here today will still have a chance to battle back out of the lower bracket where Team Liquid awaits them. I'm EC here on One More Game TV 2, joined by EG's own fear for the broadcast. And fear, break it down for me, man. I mean, we talked a lot about the way the lineups seem to fit together and, you know, their strengths, their weaknesses, so on and so forth. But really, what was it that gave Alliance the big, big opportunity that they were able to capitalize on in taking a 25-minute win in Game 1? Radiant Team Bang. And it looks like, actually, we may have lost him. And, okay, we'll get him back on as soon as we possibly can. Hopefully, all's well with him. There he is. Welcome back. <laughs> so, I, I, we apparently yeah, got disconnected. I didn't that. even notice it. So Yeah, I had to restart my um, client real quick. So Not a problem. The question I had just thrown to you, gave you the introduction and all that, was go ahead and break it down for us. I mean, we talked a lot about the relative weaknesses and strengths of each lineup. We both felt like Alliance's lineup might be a little thin, but in the end, even under the pressure and Loda having a real tough start out of that tri lane as you talked about, they were just able to kind of run over Fnatic in the mid game. Break that down for us. Yeah, and I really think that was um, well, it's two things. First of all, Alliance playing crazy good, and second of all, it was Fnatic. Like they tried forcing some kills that didn't need to be forced. Instead, they could have just went and got experience on their own. But they tried going for these kills, which had potential. But the downside is Alliance was ready for it every time. Like on that one attempt mid, EGM and AK were there sitting behind him, and they ended up getting a kill in the gyro coffin instead of the other way around. And again, they tried it again, and S4 in perfect position. As soon as he got up position, the roar was let off. So I think they're a little overzealous that game and trying to get stuff done early game instead of just being like, okay, we have the better team fight heroes. Let's just get our levels, get our team fight abilities, and then stick it to them. Well, the one thing I think that was a big concern to both of us, and we talked about it quite a bit, is a high-value hero like a Darkseer, for example, running out of that tri lane. He suffered so much. He was nowhere near a Mac. He was on Tier 1 boots. Hell, he might have been still on Tier 1 boots by the end. I didn't actually check his inventory. He was broke as a joke. He was really underleveled. He was, what, level 6 at like 11, 12 minutes in? You just don't see that happen. And having a hero like that usually brings you so much more value in the early and mid-game. You can just tell it really took the wind out of Fnatic sales. It really did, and like I said about Fnatic, is they're not really a team you see run too many team fight strategies. I think their style is more split push. They love split push. That's what they succeed the most on, and that's what they play the most. And getting this keeper light is great for them. Split push hero galore. He not only is he split push in the sense that he has that portal port, he can port anyone on the map to his location, which helps with split pushing. But he buys time for split push. And that is something that's very important, especially against teams like Alliance that love to group up and take advantage of weak links in your lineup. I'll take a look at Fnatic's bans, getting rid of the Magnus, and I gotta say, very much agree. Don't give the Bulldog the Druid. Just don't do it, man. It's never gonna work out well for you. Wisp and Bad Rider <laughs> taken out by Alliance. So we're waiting on our front two. While we have a moment, though, just in case some of the folks have to go by the time the broadcast is done, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find out more about you with all of the knowledge you're dropping. I'm sure they're interested to keep up with you more. Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Twitter and on Facebook at FearDota. And you can also drop by my stream if you are a stream viewer here on Twitch, which you obviously are if you're listening to this. But um, Fear Darkness is where you can find me there as well. There you go. So our first two coming out, Alliance going to grab up the Nature's Prophet and the Life Stealer. And I want to say that we actually, you and I had a conversation. I can't remember if it was me or you or me, or me and Merlini about, mm -hmm. you know, how much synergy there really is with the Life Stealer and a Nature's Prophet. I mean, Prophet, obviously, with his global presence, he's a great hero in and of himself. But the fact that he can infest in a Prophet and therefore you have two heroes that now have global presence, not quite as good as a Wisp possibly could be. But still, that kind of mobility is a nice way to deal with the split push, as you mentioned, favored by Fnatic, in which they already drafted a little bit of with the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. They they might want to... I'm just curious to see if they take that PL, but anyways, regardless of that, yes, the Life Stealer and the Nature's Prophet is um, something that can really abuse, but especially get a hero like S4. Mm -hmm. Like, S4 is one of those players that likes to go on the other half of the map by himself a lot, maybe smoked up, 
But if he does do that, and he has the backup of a life stealer and a nature's prophet, they're going to be able to get easy kills off. So it really comes down to execution, and it is kind of like that Wisp thing. It's not as popular because right. nature's prophet doesn't give you what Wisp gives you to, or gives your carry anything, but um, it does give you that mobility and allows you to gank players that love to split push and they actually did pick up the peel and they took the bane as well which is it's really smart to take bane against life stealer for one simple reason it's um it's well a lot of reasons honestly but for the landing phase alone the enfeeble if you get that early and you throw it on the life stealer if they choose to go aggressive trend that's going to have his damage and it's going to allow appeal to get a lot more cs in the lane whereas otherwise he probably wouldn't get much at all because life stealer would just have complete free roam over that lane, and later on in the game, the grip is going to be great for that. I, it's pretty obvious they're going to take PL, I think. They both split push. What a better hero than PL and Coddle for that. I'll tell you what's funny. As maligned as Keeper of the Light and Phantom Lancer happen to be, I, I uh, twice I know of, I want to say even going back a little further, the last three times I've seen these two heroes put together, as good as they are together, I've seen them lose at least twice here recently. So, I mean, it's a combination that is open for abuse, and with Alliance grabbing a Leshrag now, you can already see they've got some push in mind of their own. They're going to be able to put together a really strong offensive tri lane if they want to. And taking the Leshrag here, I get it. I almost wonder if a Shadow Demon might not have been a better pickup, though. That would have given them a counter to Phantom Lancer being able to disrupt him or one of his illusions to get their own army going with a little RNG luck, and it also gives them a great setup for the, uh, for the Lifestealer. But again, with open wounds, you can't just take out the middleman if you're not super concerned about it. Use open wounds to lead off. Let Lashrak land a split earth off of that. Then maybe one more stun. But yeah, I mean, when I look at Alliance's lineup, with the Prophet, it's a little more questionable. Usually you'll see Prophet in the jungle or in the off lane. But I definitely would not put it, uh, would not take it away from them, the idea of maybe running an offensive tri lane given the, two, the one support we see with the Lifestealer. Yeah, I think, um, I think they have to go aggressive tri lane. Like, absolutely need to for a couple of reasons. The first reason is it's Alliance, and Alliance is very predictable, but at the same time, they do what they do extremely well. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to predict it, but they make very few mistakes because they play the same thing over and over again that it's very hard to deal with. So the problem I have with if they don't aggressive trialing is they're farming up a life stealer while PL gets free farm. That's not a good trade. Right. That's really just not a good trade. So the reason I see them picking up Leshrac here instead of Shadow Demon is a couple reasons. First of all, Shadow Demon and Life Stealer in itself isn't that much a kill potential, to be honest with you. Because mm -hmm. Disrupt doesn't do damage, necessarily. It's just like a setup ability, and you don't need a setup ability when you have Life Stealer. Life Stealer should set up everything. He's right. in melee range, uh, open wounds is pretty good range, and whatnot. But one thing Leshrac does bring you that Shadow Demon does not is after, if they do win a team fight or win two team fights in a row, that edict will be there to bring towers down. Right. And that's something they really want to focus on. Win fights, get a huge advantage, get way ahead, and just stay ahead. We can see some team fight heroes coming out from Alliance, or bands, I should say. The Beastmaster, the Darkseer, both taken out. Fnatic obviously still in search of a mid. Fnatic getting rid of some push with the Chen, and the Puck got to be banned out as well. And, you know, Looking ahead with Alliance's options here, and I actually now thinking back to it, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and after a while you cast so much, some of the games start to run together, but I want to say it was actually Alliance who was one of those com one of those teams seconds. that lost with a Phantom Lancer and a Keeper of the Light. They definitely lost with the PL to Na'Vi in uh, the one game they did drop in that best of three series so they're going to have some options available so far as a potential other carry that they might want to pick up and obviously if they're going to be running an offensive tri lane that'll be solo safe farm for whatever whatever other hero they pick up animage is going to be an option there gyrocopter has not been banned out quite yet either both of which can do okay against the phantom lancer late but still you always got to worry about the liability yeah, I, they're not going to do that, though, because it's almost 100% Admiral Bulldogs playing this Nature's Prophet, mm -hmm. I think. And they need a hero for S4 still, which is going to go down the mid lane. Unless they do something cute, it, it actually doesn't matter, but I pretty much... My point is, is Loda's playing this life stealer. Seconds, right? Like, any way you slice it, unless S4 does some solo mid life stealer action, which <laughs> I don't really see happening. Like I said, lines is very easy to predict, but the, what they do do, they're very good at. And that's the storm. Okay, so I don't think they're. I think that they're not going to put life stealer mid at all, just to be clown. I don't think they would anyway. But I was just throwing out there. That's the one possible option they do have. Right. But uh, anyways, nature's prophet. It's a good hero to have him on the easy lane when you're aggressive tri laning as well, because he can always TP down there at any point in time and make that a quad lane. And I think that's what they're going to aim for.
Well, Fnatic adding a bit of reach to their lineup. Gotta love Ten that. Storm Spirit's three. ability to take heroes out of the fight. I mean, just to be jump Five on someone. Seven. The Bane already a very solid answer to the Lifestealer, as you had said. And, you know, Enfeeble, I think, is one of those spells that doesn't get as much attention as it should. Nightmare is excellent to set up any kind of an engagement, especially in the laning phase, if you can get it off, of course. But in Feeble, as you mentioned, it hurts him with CS. It hurts him just in terms of the damage he can do. And it can't be removed by magic immunity, which is something that's often overlooked as well. So Lifestealer not being able to rage through that and to engage through that so long as it goes off before he hits his rage button really does limit their options in terms of how aggressive they, they can be. It makes it so they have to really pick and choose their shots. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one thing they do have, like I said, is even though he doesn't have the damage... They still have a lot of, well, they still need their next two. They do do the Shadow Demon, so this is going to be traditional Leshrac Shadow Demon combo with supports. Mm -hmm. good, the good thing about this, super strong lane. Bad thing about this, they have no lockdown for Storm Spirit. Yep. And that is going to be their mid here they pick up. I think it's going to really focus on shutting Storm down because they need that badly. Fnatic grabs a Rattle Trap, and I love that pick up here. Picking him up, that's more reach they have, more ways to start a fight, a guaranteed way to take Lifestealer out of the fight. I mean, Lifestealer is a hero who wants to get on you, stick on you. They're going to go ahead and grab a Juggernaut here, so we'll see. I mean, I, I'm going to guess that's going to be a mid-Juggernaut. We'll see who's going to wind up on him, but, you know, they needed more damage, but now there's just no way a Lifestealer and a Juggernaut's ever going to have any kind of a chance to match up with a Phantom Lancer late. Just means Alliance is going to be once again under the gun to get the job done early on. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. Like like I said, I think if they needed a hero that was going to shut Storm down mid, and they didn't pick that, but <laughs> yeah. they have, like, this Storm, if he gets a good start, they're going to need Nature's Prophet to get farmed, get that Hex, Orchid, get, find ways, maybe even the Loda goes for an Orchid, to just kind of shut the Storm down. But the one thing Juggernaut does do, and they kind of reveal their hand with, is they want to get ahead, mm -hmm. and they want to get buildings. They've right. got the Healing Ward, they've got the Edict, they've got the Treants. They just want to snowball. This game is going to be all about, about Alliance snowballing. And if they don't, I don't like their chances at all. Totally agree. And, you know, when I look at, their, at what they're going to be trying to do here, they're going to have to be active. I don't think this is going to be a quiet early game. I mean, with an offensive tri-lane against what is likely to be a defensive tri-lane, virtually a guarantee to be a defensive tri-lane, that alone usually means we're going to see some action. And, yeah, Alliance is not going to waste any time. They've already smoked up just south of their Tier 1. And they're going to be making a run for the jungle now. Seen many a game get out of control because one early smoke gank goes the way of the aggressors. Loda's leading things off. He's got one point already in the open wounds. S4 has a place to point yet. Ake has a point in the split earth. Let's see how they want to do this. Disruption already skilled by Shadow Demon as well. Trixie, the closest target right now. They might catch Hani. Hani is going to be heading north. They're going to go ahead and start going that direction as well. Oh, man. He has to know this is aggressive trialing. And Hani is going to be spotted. There's the open wounds. Right clicks are coming. The rest of the team's going to react. He's trying the nightmare himself there. He finally does. And the uh, Illuminate does damage, however, with Blade Fury there. Loda does secure the kill with the help of S4 and company. So first blood, the fact that it's on the Bane, not the end of the world, but certainly the start that, that uh, Alliance needed with their lineup being as thin as it is and pretty much all in again on the early and mid game. Yeah, I, Fnatic had to know this is an aggressive trend. They had to know there's a chance that, of course, they wouldn't have known the smoking pattern. That was really clever mm -hmm. by Alliance, but he had to have known that they were going to go and contest this and try to stop the pool. And I think it was the wrong call to even be out there regardless. So getting a little cocky there and paying for it <laughs> ten times, especially because of what um, Alliance is trying to accomplish here. All right, now, as we've seen before, and I want to say it was you and I that had the conversation about this, but again, it might have been me and, me, uh, me and Merlin. Yeah, I honestly Keep an eye on mid, though, real quick. They're going for a gank here. And here we go. There's a disruption. S4 already using the Blade Fury. A beautifully timed split Earth and No Tail. Going to be the latest in a list of casualties. And, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't think I'm a genius for saying it was pretty obvious, but at the same time, believe I got it right. Not going to be a quite early game at all, as Alliance already pouring it on and pouring it on hot and heavy. Yeah, they're being really, really creative with on how they're choosing the gank here. And it's just kind of catching them off guard. And just really well played, I guess. They're, they might go for round two here, just trying to get the Shuggernaut <laughs> a good start. And we can see they've got another smoke. Ake is...
Claret getting using a clarity to get his mana back up. Super warded in the jungle, by the way. So good job there. And here they come again. And no tail is in no man's land. Oh, that's the worst place he could have gone. Not even a chance to turn up the river. That's gonna be another kill. Alliance is just getting work done. And Ake, okay, as low as he got, still not gonna die. And now we see Fly moving over here, but honestly, this is wasted time. Look at the camps. Nothing is spawned. They can't do anything anywhere. The entire Radiant Jungle at this point is blocked off. That's three to nothing. We take a look at the kill board. One, one, and one. Spread out to the three heroes. Well, at least two of the th two heroes you would really want to have them on in Loda and in S4 in mid. And it never hurts to have a Shadow Demon with the kill either. Yeah, they're getting a ton of work done early game. And then Fly can't even do anything mid. Him being here is just kind of like a response to like... Okay, he's getting ganked a lot. Maybe I can help him out. But he's a keeper of light. He has no stun. Right. He can't really stop. But he's going to dispel the smoke, but he's going to die for it. Looking at the last this, and here's the cool thing. Or at least if you're an Alliance fan. up, oh, Hang on. We just saw another kill. Where did that take place? In the, yeah, it looks like they yeah. caught someone out right yeah. on the lip of the river. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. He's gonna, he spotted out the smoke, but he's going to die for it. Yep. And there it is. <laughs> now we see one end up dropping. That's going to make it four to nothing now. And what's really nice, if you're in the boat of Alliance, it's not even costing you CS. At the top, you've got Loda at 9. He's ahead of Phantom Lancer right now. Jugger in mid has 10. So, I mean, you you have your supports moving around and getting a lot done across the map, but it's not even hurting your farming carry in the offensive tri-lane. Which is really bizarre, to be honest with you, because they had a tri-lane down there. And I, they may have just been... This is just Alliance playing really smart, because... I think the supports are just scared that the roaming combo that went mid was actually still lingering bottom, and they can die very easily to that. Yep. And but they they were just, just playing really smart about it, and they went mid instead. And oh yeah, Loda just played really cocky in bot lane, like they were there and just kept farming, but they weren't there, and they got a kill on the map, and they're going again. And we've got two. That is going to be spotted now, dewarded though by Alliance, trying to keep their opponents in the dark as much as they possibly can. And Trixie even having a hard time of it. Bulldog's doing an excellent job. He's right at the top of the CS. Three of the top four farmers all belong to Alliance. I mean, this could not be going better. It's four to one. And, I mean, Alliance is just absolutely rolling at this point. There's really no other way to say it. Yeah, they've given away so many kills the early game. It's When I was talking about that snowball, it, the snowball is already formed. Hmm. And it's, it's just a little ball. It's a matter of time if they keep this up until it turns into like a, a full snowman. Well, we've got another smoke up from Ake and EGM. Hani is spotted. They're going to engage. They're trying to anyway. Can they catch him? Yep. They get the disruption off. He's got help to the south. Can it get there in time? Beautifully time split Earth again. That's another death. Brain sap. Oh, wow. Nightmare almost does the trick. However, Shadow Demon does manage to secure the kill nonetheless. Rich get richer, richer as we see a double damage room picked up. Or activated, excuse me, by Juggernaut and an invis found by EGM. So free smoke. And I mean, e even right now, and this is a product of just how much pressure they're under. Era's still not doing that well. He's got 14 last hits, 17 for Jugger, 19 for Loda, 22 for Bulldog. They're getting farm everywhere they need to. And really, I use this word in game one, and it feels the same now. It just feels like they're in disarray. And we're going to have a disruption. Soulcatcher doesn't go where it should. Doesn't matter. They, don't, they are just running over Fnatic. The Illuminate will connect, and EGM is going to come close to death. But again, they make it away unscathed. We are five minutes into this game, and we have six kills all on the side of Alliance. What can Fnatic do for you? Well, given the draft that they have... Uh, hang they on. Gank attempt to top. We're going to see a nightmare. Now the cogs are going to go down. He's going to... He might actually... Nope, never mind. Brain sap should make it easy enough to clean him up. So finally, they get something going. Loda's going to go ahead and teleport top now, though. And he's going to try to pursue this out. Not going to be able to find anyone as Bane did dip into the side shop. But anyway, continue. I was going to say, like, what they're doing now is what they need to do. They need to, like, create some pressure elsewhere on the map. They're not safe in their side of the map anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be for a long time. And mid lane, actually, that's where going to dive this. And go for it with the Omni Slash. There's the remnant, but uh, Tower cleans him uh -huh. up. So playing a little too aggressive that time. And that's on the, you know, to me, that feels like a big kill. That gives Storm at least something that he can hang his hat on. I mean, he is level six, so he's got that going for him. He has got a little experience there, a little gold. They are closing the gap, but still quite a bit behind. Yeah, that was a little mistake from S4, actually. He did have his um, spin up that could have dodged the last remnant that hit him there, hmm. and that would have secured him the kill at least. He may have died after, but 
it still would have been something not too horrible. And then the, again, they're going on the coddle bottom. We're going to see a split earth follow up an expertly placed disruption. Not that it's hard to place a disruption as a single target ability. And this is beginning to feel a, a little bit like a broken record. These two yeah. are just a, 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 a marauding gank squad. Trixie's going to spot oh. out Ake, though. So he may be able to get some return damage done. There's Shadow Poison being stacked, and Ake's trying to get off the split earth. <laughs> Looked like the little horse he was trying to count. Now the open wound is there on Trixie. Trixie is going to eat some damage. Here comes Air looking to re-engage. Nightmare going to bail their buddy out, but there's a disruption as well. We're going to see one drop. That is Trixie. Loda and EGM now maybe in a little bit of trouble. EGM's going to head to the other side of the woods. Here comes No Tail. S4 is right behind him, though. Hani now eating the majority of the Blade Fury damage. Eats through the tree, but not going to be enough here. Back up and ready to go is Trixie. Trixie engaging on Loda. Air is there doing good damage. There's the Rage through the Illuminate. Now they're going to go ahead and re-engage. Open wounds on Trixie. No Tail doing what damage he can. He locks down S4. S4 comes out, has Blade, uh, Blade Fury if he wants to use it, but actually it was on cooldown. A few seconds more he would have had it. So a lot of action all over the map so far. Alliance... Continues to keep the edge 10 to 4. We're not 10 minutes yet, but hell, we've got 16 kills on the board. How about we look at the gold graph? We can see Alliance has been leading by about 2,500 gold for quite some time now. Looking at the experience, 2,000 experience in their favor as well. Yeah, the games like these I really love to watch because this is just like perfect synergy between two supports, really. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just on, like, the same page this entire game, and they're just single-handedly running around creating space with this combo, and Aki is, like, like, I don't even know, like, 8 for 8 on splitters on the time disruption there, mm -hmm. playing out of his mind. Beautiful, beautiful use. Now we got S4 eating some damage. EGM's there to help bail him out, though, no tail. A little bit of mana bottling himself up, able to use ball lightning to get out of trouble. Back to the CS, though. At this point, Loda is opening up a pretty decent lead on the PL. Now, one of the most maddening things about PL, he, he is a hero that could close the gap on you unless you keep the pressure up. But at this point, I can't imagine Alliance doing anything else. Why would they? They're doing so well, as you mentioned, EGM and Ake just doing work across the map, and they are just making it so tough to be Fnatic right now. Yeah, another cute thing that happened, I don't know if you noticed, you know how Lifestealer TP'd top mm -hmm. and earlier for that Bane that just went and TP'd there, but one thing they did was, and it was extremely early, is they infested the Nature's Prophet from that lane and had that, that's why Lifestealer was in that fight, that last fight bottom, because hmm. he infested the Nature's Prophet, which is pretty common, but you usually don't see it like seven minutes into the game. Right. And that just kind of, they, were un, they weren't expecting that, and that really just turned the fight for them. And we talked about that during the draft, and I think it's, you know, everybody t knows about a Wisp and all that he can give you, and of course the Nakes Bomb, hang on, Hook's going to connect on EGM, Ake's right there, there's a disruption to buy himself some time, Trixie eats a lot of damage as the Prophet Ulti follows up the Split Earth, now the Cat barks at the Dog, but the Illuminate doing good damage from the low ground, PL actually cleans up Leshrac, there's an Omni Slash to get one kill on Bulldog, looking to clean up Fly, will succeed, No Tail, tardy to the party, and unable to engage and help his team out. 12 to 7 as the dust settles. It is an absolute throwdown here. Yeah, that was actually kind of really funny to me because if you look where the coddle died, you can see there's a tree eaten on the side there. <laughs> yep. Instead of eating the sprout to get out of the sprout, he actually ate a tree <laughs> in the forest instead. And that, I just found that kind of really hilarious. <laughs> I don't even know how you managed to do that. Panic while you in the middle of a sprout. Panic I don't even know you had a range on Tango's for that. That's just <laughs> impressive. Uh, Loda and company now looking to clear the first tower from the board, but looks like, yeah, they're going to stay. I was going to say Bulldog thought better of it, but they are staying spread out. Rocket Flare's doing a bit of damage, but no real concerted pressure. Instead, looks like mid's going to be the next battleground as No Tail's leading the way. He's got a team behind him right across the river. Trixie and Fly. Trixie level 7 now. We saw his hook in action. Unfortunately, didn't exactly go his way last time. And, you know, that's something we didn't really talk about. I mean, Shadow Demon, and, you know, I, I mentioned during the draft that I felt like it would be a good pickup because of how he works with Leshrac and because of the fact that he, he is a moderate late-game counter to a Phantom Lancer being able to disrupt his own illusions and make an army of your own. But it's also an excellent way to cope with, uh, with heroes like Bane, to cope with heroes like Clockwork. Whenever you have those single target initiation spells and you have a hero in trouble, even if it's you or even if it's a buddy, just being able to disrupt them by a second or two for your team to react can often be the difference. And I think that's what we saw. I mean, that really did set the tone of things. After, the dis after he disrupted himself, Clockwork was basically just food. And then we saw Alliance come in and clean things up. Yeah, Shadow Name is an amazing counter initiator for Bane. Because I'm pretty sure, like... If you're a gripping zone and you 
like defensively disrupt the person being gripped, I'm pretty sure that just cancels the grip altogether. Mm -hmm. So that's like a huge counter to that, which can actually save Loda if he's not raged during that time. And Loda? Eating a little bit. Now they're going to go ahead and dust and go right on air. A lot of help around. And actually, the first miss split Earth of the entire game. Not going to matter in the end as Loda infests to get himself back up into fighting shape. And yeah, this is beginning to look really quite scary. And this is a, I mean, uh, the idea of Leshrac, Shadow Demon, and Night and uh, Life Stealer is not like some gigantic new new combination. But really, you don't see it played quite this well very often. I mean, it's one thing for it to be successful, but they're not. On, they didn't only win low to his lane. They won two lanes. They definitely won mid. Yeah, absolutely. And. Uh... Aki was just trying to prove a point that he's like still human and just <laughs> missing on purpose. S4 gonna be cleaned up at top as he is Fiend's grip, so there's a nice little nice little win for Fnatic being able to get a kill wherever they can. In the meantime, loaded just to the north of Era. It is gonna be daytime now. And he's just kinda hanging out. In the meantime, looks like we had an engagement on no tail. He's ball lightning away out of mana now. Ake might pursue him. He's got just brown boots, and Bulldog thought about TPing and thought better of it. Might have been able to get a kill if he had, but we've got three up top now from Fnatic and maybe looking to take a tower of their own. Yeah, they're doing what they do best. When they have problems in the laning phase, they just ditch the lanes and try to make something happen elsewhere on the map. We're going to see a TP reaction. That's going to be Loda landing in. He's under cover of an invis, and Fly's going to go ahead and TP away. Trixie. Has a TP. Lotus going to pursue him out. Doesn't have a way to stun him. But doesn't matter as he doesn't spot him anyway. So a bit more movement. In the meantime, they do manage to hold the top tower. Lotus going to find himself a bit more free farm. We can see he's gone phase drums. And, you know, I really like this build that he's doing. Phase drums, especially against this lineup, and given how important it is that they not only win, but they win soon. Excellent. Very stable way to build him. Gives him some survivability. Now we're going to have an engagement in middle as S4. Caught by the vortex. Bulldog once again thinks better of it. Decides... Not needed as S4 spins to safety. Yeah, Bulldog's build to me is a little interesting too. It's not unheard of, but it's very rare nowadays that you see the Prophet knock go the Midas. He's actually going phase boots. I'm assuming that's for the laning phase. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go directly into a mechanism. Now they, they just linked up Bulldog and Loda, keeping bottom. And here we go. Era, there's the dust, and they're going to spot him. Can they catch him? Sprout does get him, but Trixie's there. The cog's down to protect his buddy. Good attempt there. And now Fiend's grip on EGM, but it's interrupted by the mini stun on Omni Slash. Hani's going to be cleaned up. EGM disrupts himself just in time. Now the re-engagement. No Tail doesn't have much mana, but we're going to see one cleaned up. He's trying to bounce around. Fly. Gives him a nice little dose. There's Trixie hooking through the woods. S4 going right click for right click with him. Loda continues to do work and clean things up. He's going to get a flare off, but will be killed. Two for two the exchange. Now the re-engagement. Spirit Lance thrown. Era taking a chance that nobody has dust, and actually Bulldog did. He just didn't have it off cooldown. So Fly and Era do survive. They end up going two for two. And that went probably about as well as it could for Fnatic, to be honest. Yeah, there's so many situations like this, even though you have Coddle PL. Mm -hmm. And this is probably what you've seen as well in the games where Coddle PL loses. Is this PL gets under so much pressure early game, and he's not able to find farm. Right. As good as a hero is with farm, without farm, he's really not that good of a hero at all. Mm -hmm. And if, when you lose early game this badly... His items, like, sure, he's going to get up his Diffusal Blade. That's always a core item, and that's going to be great. But he's not going to He's gonna have a hard time killing. Oh, they're actually going to go on Era here. Demonic Purge. They do have Dust and Spin. Here comes No Tail, but S4 spins through before they can get the Vortex off. They're trying to catch him from the high ground. We're going to see a, dis or, excuse me, a Nightmare on the No Tail. Now EGM engaged upon There's Load up. Mech goes off. Everyone back up and ready to fight. In the meantime, they look to re-engage. Good. Sprout going to catch Hani. In the meantime, No Tail being cleaned up on the top side. They managed to get one. No Tail still in trouble. Spirit Lance going to hit. S4, now Bulldog thought of it, but they are going to end up backing off. Probably the right call, that mech showing its value. And you were in the, the process of talking about that when our last fight broke out. I actually talked to, briefly about that in the first broadcast. I really actually like mech in a lineup like this, a very mid-game oriented lineup. Having that item up as quickly as a profit can bring it to bear. We're beginning to already see just how valuable that is, and they're going to get a tier one as well as a free kill on Bane. Yeah, you can see how much damage they're taking from Illuminate, all the spam, the Rocket Flare, uh, the Lances, all this spam, and the mech is great for that, but what's even better for that is this Juggernaut pick. Yep. It's also, you know, the Healing Ward is down that entire time. Juggernaut's becoming one of those heroes that's like, if you want to push against a Coddle, you need a Juggernaut. He's becoming more popular for that one reason alone, yep. that you can use this hero to push against some of the strongest anti-pushers in the game, such as Coddle.
We see a three-man smoke heading the way of Loda. That's going to be four, as Lotel is under cover of smoke as well. Loda going to have to be fast-fingered here and able to rage. Looking for a TP. Looking, Yeah, he doesn't have a TP in his inventory. He's going to have to drums to try to get back to safety very quick on his rage, and that made all the difference. That's exactly what I was talking about. Sometimes the best way to counter a Storm Spirit if you're a lifestealer is just to be really quick on the draw. Absolutely. The one thing that drums is really good for, obviously, it's the mobility. The one thing you lack in is going to be damage. You obviously have more damage if you go treads, you know, fast arm late instead of and skip the drums and get like a deso. But when, when they have a lineup like this, he needs the mobility for sure. He right. needs to run around. He needs to get a lot done early game, get stuff done early game. Well, seeing him, I mean, he's already got his arm lit up, and that's a nice thing. You know, it's a luxury to be able to go this build and still have your arm lit up before 16 minutes. So, I mean, you know, his damage output is okay. It's not the best as it could be. It's actually, it's, it's really good considering how much farm that Fnatic has managed to acquire. Exactly. So S4 going to be rotating over to No-Tail. No-Tail laying into the tower, and, yep, going to go ahead and ball lining away S4 wisely, not blowing the ulti in the meantime. Profit and company take another tier one, and we can already begin to see. And this is exactly what I feel like Alliance needs to do. Just play on the other on the on the other team side of the map. Don't let up. Strangle them. Absolutely. One thing like that I just want to point out is uh, the Storm Spirit builds. They actually did this twice against us, and this boosted travel rush. First of all, I I don't like it, <laughs> <laughs> but. The one thing it does do is it's really good for counter initiation. Right. What they did against us with this is they TP'd on like the creeps on the people we uh, were chasing down, and he was always in the fight, which is great. But I don't think this is an item you need when you're behind. I think if you're ahead and you get this item, it helps you stay ahead because you are able to get anywhere and just counter gank, and your presence is going to be much higher. And they're actually going to go for a Roshan here. But this this build is it's very interesting. I think Fnatic's the only team I've ever seen do this. And let's see how it's... I'm not going to say this game is going to be decided by that whatsoever, right. but it's just very interesting to me. Yeah, it's definitely a different wrinkle, and it's a nice way to use uh, to use a Storm Spirit. I mean, and I, I remember talking about that when they did it to you guys, actually. Basically, it, it makes, you know, Storm Spirit's a hero known for his reach and his range, and it effectively means he has global reach and range. It, it goes from being, you know, good reach and range to global. He can be anywhere at any time, ready to fight, so long as he's quick on the trigger. We're going to hear an infest, so Bulldog yep. has a passenger. And they're going to tell up. Uh, thought about it. Thought about going top. Looks like they want to wait for their team to get into position. Probably the right call to make. But, yep, there we go. Now they're going to try to catch Fly. There's the infest out. And damage is enough. So they're able to clean him up before he can get away. Hani's in no man's land. He, yeah, he's actually surrounded. But he does manage to uh, TP away as they didn't close the uh, didn't close the perimeter quite quickly enough. In the meantime, S4 going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Era in bottom lane. Looks like both will make it away quite safely, though. Yeah, that was some nice game sense by Bulldog there. That was a completely blind TP. That was like, it was really delayed when he TP'd as well. But there were so many heroes on the map. He just guessed, and he managed to find one. But bottom lane, they're going on S4 with everything they got. Yep, he's going to be cleaned up easily. And that's exactly what you were talking about there, Fear. What, uh, that global presence. All, you know, Storm Sphere just casually TP'd in. There's no way that he didn't know it was coming. But what do you do as a juggernaut? All you can do is try to run, but if you get hit with a Spirit Lance, you're not going anywhere fast. So they do manage to yeah. get a free kill. He does have an ultimate orb up already. So we'll see what direction he wants to go with his build so far. Lifestealer has that Aegis, of course. Drums, phase, and an armlet. Bulldog's now going for the Shadow Blade. I still really like an early mech on a Prophet. I really do. And I think we've seen that make such a difference for this team. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that's really going to help. The only thing, the downside of going to early mech is he's not going to, like, when you're ahead like this and you have a Midas... You just get out of control, and that's not going to really happen this game because he doesn't have that extra income and levels. But he is going to have that Shadow Blade now, which is a very, very key item when you do these Life Stealer bombs. Because you can just run in, go in invisible, and usually they're not going to detect that most of the time. And you can either do that to get in there, or you can use it to escape and not die. Because Life Stealer has the rage, and they're going on mid here, Bulldog, trying to find that. I'm just going to push, I guess. They're grouping up as five. Ake is under cover of an invis rune. He's trying to find a target, but not going to be able to do so. There's no tail, but no reason to engage on him right now. Luminate is there. Doing a little bit of damage. But for the moment, just continuing to show their faces down here. This is giving Trixie a little bit of time to find some farm up the top. He's not far from a mech. He's about 500 gold out from it right now. And we'll see S4 drop his healing ward probably with the next creep wave. Yeah, this is what I love from um, Loda here. 
The one thing about the storm build that I really was disliking is the way it builds up if you're behind. Yep, here we go. He Lotus shows his face, just looped around yeah. and gave him a slap on the ass, basically. But uh, yeah, I could. What you were getting ready to say, I'm sure, has to do with the orchid choice. Yeah, exactly. Because yep. he's he's re he's when he goes bots like this, this investment is really good for that. But he, the next build up item he has is going to come really slow. Mm -hmm. So this orchid's going to do a lot of work on this storm by the time he gets a BKB up or an orchids. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to see Bulldog looking for a target. Trixie was it. That's all fake Phantom Lancers. Bulldog still looking to find someone. He's got some targets. Arrows right beside them, and. Up, they take the chance. Wrong one. Bulldog does reveal himself. The rest of his team has fallen back to bottom, though. It looks like they want to put together a push here, and I agree with you. I think Orchid is one of... It, it, very rarely do I see a lifestealer, and granted it is, of course, because it is professional-level players who understand the game quite well, but very rarely do I see a lifestealer get an Orchid and it be a bad investment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially He got it for the sole reason for just pretty much the storm straight, but right. that's the reason enough. They, like I said from the beginning of this game, they don't have good lockdown for storm. Could be a two for top. one up here. We see the mech being used. Lotus going for it, though. We're going to have a reaction from S4. S4 and Loda now going head hunting. No Tail has very little mana. Just used his last bottle charge. Loda knows there's a target to the south, but Era is going to be able to escape via Doppelwalk. No Tail in the meantime making a beeline for the side shop, and that should be enough. Yeah, Loda just going to fall back and farm. He's almost got enough for another Oblivion Staff, and this whole time, look at bottom. Tier 2 going to end up dropping. Another tower goes the way of Alliance, and all of a sudden, only one outer tier tower remains for Fnatic, and they've only taken one tower this entire game. They've never been in a position to, like, get together and go as five to take any towers. The only time they do get a tower is when they just create distractions and split push. And honestly, they, they can't be too unhappy with what just happened there. They right. got a kill and lost a tower, but they're going to lose that tower no matter what. It, whenever Alliance decided just to pull the trigger, they could have done that. And they're doing a good job on, on just like... Actually, you know, they're using these bots and using clever positioning because the Storm alone can't get a kill on any of these heroes. Right. He needs, like, the Bane to be there or someone else. They're doing a good job lingering one hero around in the enemy jungle, having the Storm TP in, and just finding these kills. Seeing some real aggression now begin to show itself out of Alliance. They're, they're, they've abandoned being sneaky about it. Just screw it. We'll walk across the map. We'll get in the lane, and we're going to push a tower. And really no reason not to. And, and uh, you know, right now it looks like Arrow's going to go ahead and split push. Um, bottom tier one. They're going to take this tier two super fast. And right now, Fear, is this the time you're thinking tier three? Yeah, they're definitely going to have to go for tier 3 soonish because they've got the gold lead now. They they might want to finish a couple of key items before they go tier 3, but they have no reason to like just stop pushing. They need to keep pushing. Their lineup was built to be pushing right now. The healing ward goes down, stops the illuminate damage. I assume they go in now. Loda has his orchid ready, and we're going to see Blinding Light going to buy a little bit of time, and here we go. The engagement's going to be there. He comes in. Illuminate does catch the targets, but now no tail silence. He's going to be, no, nightmared by Bane. Buys a little bit of time, but he will be cleaned up eventually. And all that healing, the mech now going off, the healing ward, almost as if they weren't in a fight. They ate an Illuminate, they ate, they ate everything there. Now Trixie going to be locked in, but does manage to eat his way out or chop his way out more appropriately. Loda going to go ahead and rage through a Spear and Lance. And what can they do? I mean, you know, Illuminate's doing okay damage, but it's not dealing near enough. And we're going to see them try to spam this out. Trixie has a hook ready if he wants to use it, has a mech charge available as well. The Tier 3 being chopped away by the Treants. There's actually another name for those, like the Decatrons or something like that. Hmm. I can't remember I what, what even, it's called. I don't even know. <laughs> but I'm assuming they're waiting for a healing ward to cool down and to go again. The only thing they could do is just back right now, call it good, finish some items up. They've got a lot of gold. But it looks like with the healing ward, they're just going to try going for a little more. Dendrocron. Uh, something like that. If you look at his cosmetics, the Dendrocron. <laughs> it's, 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 I knew it was something like that. I just couldn't remember what. As is, though. Alliance in control of their own fate, and again, one game away from punching their ticket to Shanghai. They're pushing the Tier 3 naked set of racks. Getting this racks, very big deal. We're going to see another initiation on No-Tail. Thought better of it. Backs back out after dropping a remnant. Has to be so careful when Loda's around. He gets silenced. He is food. And we're going to see, yep, he is going to be silenced. Now they're going to engage in Feebles on Loda, but... Nightmare buys him some time. S4 Omni Slash does good damage. They zone them all the way back to the Tier 4s. The rest of Alliance is going to back, but no. Loda caught and now disrupted following the Fiend's Grip. Should end up closed up, and, or should end up killed and will. And they're going to fake back here. They actually smoked. And I don't know if that was a smoke to avoid the hook or if it was a smoke. Counting smoke to chase them. Yeah. 
Here we go. Fanatic smokes up as well. Didn't even notice. The chase begins. <laughs> I was watching Alliance. And they better not stutter too long because Fnatic is out on the march looking for a target. EGM. Ooh, era. Slowed down just enough and turned around. That's going to buy the rest of the team enough time to get away. So as much as it costs them, they do manage to hold the racks in top lane. And even though they, it took a, a few kills and so, or two, it took a few deaths, that's got to be a win for them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that smoke actually just saved DGM's life, too. <laughs> they counter smoke to chase him, and just that little bit of movement speed that it gives you, the 10%, was enough to just make sure that peel couldn't get in range and just take him down. It looks like we may have another Orchid coming out on the Prophet. That's bold. Yeah, absolutely. Because like I said, with this Storm right now, he's actually going for an Orchid. They know that. Yep. They realize the Storm, he's going to have no way to deal with the Silence. Right. And one thing you did see often, especially in, from Chinese players when they play Storm Sphere at mid, is uh, they go for Treads and the straight BKB. But if you go bots straight into a BKB, you, you have no mana, you have no damage, and it's just not a viable build whatsoever. The buildup with the bots is much larger, so items like Orchids are much more effective. S4 has decided to go ahead and complete the Manta. I was wondering if he was going to go something situational, like a Scythe. A uh, No-Tail on bottom. The bomb. Here we go. No-Tail eats that silence. And there's going to be a kill going the way of Loda. 52 exactly. that's, seconds. A, that's what I'm talking about. Like, if he has treads up, oh, I'm actually going to go for a counter game on Bulldog. And there's the Fiend's Grip. Bulldog going to be caught out and cleaned up. So Fnatic able to add another kill to their total in exchange for the Storm Spear. And that's a very big kill. But in the meantime, we do see a little split push coming out of Ake and, uh, and EGM. There are still a few hanging around from Alliance if they want to try to go for this. Don't know that they have any detection. They do not. A couple of supports towards the back, Trixie and Hani. And yeah, we're going to see the Blade Fury now being used just to clean up and avoid the illusions or try to clean up those illusions. But we can already see Phantom Lancer is beginning to feel a bit more scary. So the timer is, you know, is on. I mean, at this point, he's already got drums to fuse. So what do you think? Does he go something like a Manta or maybe a Heart? Looking at the items here on Alliance, I'm thinking Manta would be just fine because Loda, he didn't go for an item that deals with PO very well. Right. He went for an item that shuts down Storm Spirit. So he's not going to be able to deal. Like, if you want the Mjolnir and, like, um, Abyssal Blade and they found him, then PO would have a very hard time against that. But it looks like he's going for the Orchid and focusing on keeping the Storm down, which is... Which is a good call, because Storm is what's going to keep him in the mid-game if you don't deal with them. But, yeah, right now, you need, if these items on PL are going to be super important before Loda gets his next item. And Bulldog, once again, he's, he's not going for AoE items either. And Ake is not that farmed himself to really kill PL illusions. And I think that's pretty much all they have to deal with it, other than, like, maybe they want to disrupt it. Just to get an army of themselves, but that's kind of luck-based. Yeah, a little RNG luck. A little RNG love. We're going to see, oh wow, they're going to land right on Trixie. Just no way to do anything about it. He did have a passenger. Loda was infested in. I mean, he just about landed right on his forehead. Just didn't have a way to prevent the teleport. And now, and you know, at this point, it's as good as they're doing. I mean, they just got a Roshan. That's excellent. They've got to be feeling pressure. I mean, they just don't have a team that's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe very well with Arrow when the late game comes. Storm Spirit, even though they're building the deal with him, is still always going to be a liability. And this is the time. Well, they're gonna feel... Oh, wow, they're gonna catch Trixie for free. Came up, there's the Omni Slash as well. Hani caught along with the Split Earth. Hani's gonna be nightmared, but not nearly quick enough to save him. Now Fly sprouted in. They're pursuing him out. No Tails there. He's forced the ball lightning back. Bulldog's pursuing him out with a Shadow Blade. Way overextends and is gonna end up dead because of it. But the rest of the team is cleaning up this Rax. The Glyph was used. Now No Tails gonna look to re-engage. Drop the Remnant, but bounce right back out just as quick. So the melee Rax does end up dropping. And now, fresh back and possibly looking to engage back out. Fnatic, short one melee Rax, does manage to at least hold for a moment. Cost them a Rax, but so long as they've got a PL, you know, they're still, they still have a shot. This game is not over. Alliance, though, at least executing the one big goal they have, which is get a Rax down. Yeah, and the big problem that's going to be for Fnatic right now is there's such Alliance is in such a position right now where they can just use Loda's rage mm -hmm. to slow push. Right. Like whenever they want with this Juggernaut healing ward and the back of the ass. Oh, there just went smelling them out here. And no dust that I see. Nope, never mind. EGM has some, just not quite close enough to to use it to any great effect. Right? He has a gym actually, so and they just didn't see him. And Bulldog poking his nose back up the top, gonna try to push that lane back out. 
And we looked at the gold. I just flashed it up. 12,000 to the advantage right now of Alliance. So no surprise to know they're that far ahead. 31 minutes in. We've got about 37 kills on the board. Been a pretty active game. And Alliance looking to make it more active as, as they are now smoked up with no tower in top lane. They're going to try to smoke and catch someone napping in the well. And we'll see if they're going to be able to do so. Saw it drawn. And they're waiting right now. The rest of Fnatic is actually moving out towards mid. And Trixie, dangerous territory, does manage to go ahead and cut to the right, though. And right now, you can see they're just waiting. Waiting on anyone to come a little too far forward. They've got a little under a quarter time left on their smoke. Hani and Trixie, yeah. <laughs> just to the north. And let's see, are they going to be able to track someone down? Yep, there we are. Shadow Poison's thrown off here immediately. Doppel walks away. Just heard an Orchid that's going to be used on No-Tail. And he actually open wounds the creep on accident. They do manage to catch Fly, though. He is going to be forced staffed out of it. Now the silence turned around on Loda, so he's first forced back out. The Orchid from Storm Spirit used on Loda, so back and forth they go. They're going to be able to clean up this last remaining range rack. The Edel Illuminate does a lot of damage to those supports. And Mech still on cool up, actually just used. So they do manage to clean up the range racks, but not exactly what they were looking for there. Not on cute disrupts, but I don't think that's... That's, you know, 6 HP illusions. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most potent uh, pushing power in the world, but... I mean, right now, how do you feel about Fnatic's chances? Again, obviously, they're way behind, and it's going to be a long game if they want to fight their way back into it, but where would you rate them? If you're in Fnatic's shoes, what's the game plan right now? Hope Alliance overextends in their base, basically, is it. If I, I don't see a way of Fnatic winning this game if Alliance just slow pushes it with Rage. Like... Yeah, they have no ways to deal with that. Maybe they can get a grip off, but, you know, EGM's going to be there to stop that grip every time on Loda with a disrupt. So right. if, they, if they just keep slow pushing this, I, I don't know what they can do. They can just hope PL pushes the line, lanes, and they can stall with Coddle and Clock as, for as long as they possibly can. And here we go. There's an Enfeeble on Loda helping out a bit. Spam comes out. We see the blinding light used, so... 80% miss percentage for a little while. Trees, happy to continue to do work. And that's, you know, you're exactly right. Even if they just use the trees. And they do still have an Aegis, by the way. So they can look to roll the dice soon. I mean, they're going to be able to... They've got about a minute and a half left on it. So if Loda just wants to jump in Bulldog, TP in, and, and go for it, they'll have a chance. However, the heart is now done on, on Lancer. So he is going to be tough to deal with. This is a big opportunity for them. If they can get something done... While the game is still in the mid game. Absolutely, but one big thing for a Fnatic right now is EGM's skill build. One of the best things to deal with a Phantom Lancer who's over farm just disrupt, but he only has one point in it. Right. So the cooldown on it and the duration is not that great right now. And the damage as well. So even if he does steal an army, it's not gonna have as much oh that's a big army that Era has built there. Yep. But a fear on gonna clear that up. There was a moment there where it looked like there might be one for EGM, but as you said, not exactly working the way they would have hoped. Yeah, right now his uh, disruption is its not going to be that great against the PL Illusions at all, mm -hmm. but once he gets that higher level, it's really, really potent, but he chose to go for the early Soul Caster for the early aggression instead of banking on the late game. A little bit more damage being done. Cog's going to go down for Trixie. They're coping with this as best as they can. There's going to be another disruption. And let's see if they can get anything done with it. They're moving up to the high ground. Blinding light going to be used once again. And they're just going to rage and go for it. S4 eats the Illuminate. Pops his own Manta. They're going to have to pick their moment at some point. Loda, again, enfeebled. Not doing as much damage as, as he should. But that tower still loses another quarter of its, of its health. And here's another wave already. Bulldog with his mech. Off cooldown in 30 seconds. They could just continue the slow push behind the... Open mouth treant thingies, Dendrekatrons, whatever the hell they're called. And now we're going to see No-Tail go for it. They silence Loda. There's a disruption on him, though. In comes the hook. Ake is going to be isolated in the cogs. Loda is going to be fiend scripted, cleaned up. Ake should end up dropping as well. Now Bulldog going to be defused. He's the next target. They're going to be able to grab him. No-Tail bouncing around. And a spirit lance more than enough to get him. Now they're not done. Still looking for a target. EGM will be killed with one well-placed rocket flare coming out at the last possible second. That's what has worried me so much, Fear, and why I kept saying Fnatic's not out of this. They just have a, a, a lineup that can match up well with Alliance if they wait too long. Yeah, absolutely, but I think that was the first mistake I've seen EGM really make that game. And, like, Loda, they initiated right under Loda with the silence in the pool, and 
EGM, he chose to disrupt the Storm, who just used everything, instead of defensively disrupting Loda, mm -hmm. which allowed the grip to go directly after, without Loda getting any abilities off. If he would have saved that disrupt, and used it on Loda instead of the Storm Spirit there, I think they would have won that fight completely. Glyph gonna be used, trying to defend the tier 2. Don't know that it's gonna matter. Yeah, the Phantom Lancer illusion is gonna be a little too potent, I do believe. Uh, they're going to get there in time to maybe deny it. Yep, good deny from S4. So the, they lose the tower, but they do manage to deny it. And it's hard to believe that that's only... I mean, uh, up to that point, they'd only take about two towers in the entire game. Two outer tier towers remaining, still missing a set of racks. How do you feel? I mean, like right now, does Alliance feel a little bit worried? The way that fight played out, is that just a, a fluke? Something that was the pure result of one mistake, as you had mentioned from Shadow Demon? Or is that beginning to show that Fnatic's lineup is going through some maturation? A little bit of both. See, they have to be worried about this PL now. He had a heart and they just won a team fight. If that doesn't worry you, I don't know what will. But they also have to be kind of sitting there like loaded for sure knows that. He's like, okay, next time, if we just keep doing this, we have two magic immune heroes. We can actually, that's something we didn't touch on. Juggernaut could also spin and hit buildings along with the life stealer, which is very, it's, they can just keep doing that and over and over again and just be like, okay, that was just kind of one mistake that happened. But we can keep doing this and keep chipping down the building, which I think they should do. If they just go back and resort to farming, they're putting themselves at a disadvantage because late game against appeal, as been mentioned, the way they built their heroes and the way PL works in general, they just don't have great heroes against PL. Right. So, yeah, they, they really need to just keep getting this push going. They're going to wait for Roshan, though. That's a smart call because they want another Aegis. Just in case something like that happens again, they've got a plan B. I had the gold graph up a minute ago. Going to go ahead and pull it back up. You're talking more than a 50% turnaround. That gold lead was in the 14,000 range, now down to 6,000 in favor of Fnatic. The experience is actually for the first time in... For the first time all game, I mean, you go back to the zero mark, it was immediately in favor of Alliance. So for the first time all game, it has crossed the Meridian line. It is now in favor of Fnatic. So they're battling back. They're battling damn hard. We can see No Tails on his way to a BKB. He's about 300 gold, 400 gold away from it. So he's in good shape there. Ghost Scepter Mech up on Trixty. Going to up his survivability a bit, Hani, with a Ghost Scepter of his own. And the support... Inventory is beginning to fill themselves out, and I'm, I'm really getting worried for Alliance. I feel like that last uh, that last push, the way it panned out for them, if they don't do something, if they, they'd have to get a Roshan to begin with, but I feel like their last attempt to push the base might be the last real chance they have. I, I, I totally agree with you, because I'm just looking at their items real quick. They got Orchid on, you know, the Nature's Prophet. They got Orchid Hyperstone, what's on the Chicken. I'm getting close to that Assault Curios, still no way to deal with this PL. And Aki would be the third way of dealing with it, but he just has a BKB, which is good farm, honestly, for a support flesh track, but he would need like a Bloodstone, you know, and some other crazy items just to have mana to keep his ult running to kill Illusions. So yeah, they're in big trouble, and S4 as well, just the Manta style, but he has 4k gold, though. Maybe he goes for a battle figure or something. Roche is at half health, but here comes the collapse out of Fnatic. Fnatic has to know what's going on. They better get in there quick, though. The healing ward's up on the high ground, and here we go. They're going to hook in and engage in. Roche is actually un trapped on the other side of the cogs. Trixie taking a lot of damage. Roche is still up and standing. Lotus still there. However, we're going to see. It was picked up. Who got it? I didn't even see who grabbed it. It's on the ground still. There it's it's Loda. Loda. It up. I was looking on the side. I did see who picked it up. Loda having to make room for it in the midst of a battle. Hani now being chased down by S4. He's going to brain sap and keep himself going. In the meantime, Ake okay, somehow up in the woods. Era is going to be silenced out. He can't run. He's using Diffuse. He's trying to run. Loda pursuing him out. An absolute cluster of a fight. Now the open wounds enough to secure the kill. And now when the dust settles, all of a sudden, by some minor miracle, Alliance came out of that not losing anyone. That was such a cluster. Whenever the cogs went down, Roche was trapped against the side of the of the uh, the side of the pit. Loda had an Aegis at his feet. Had to drop something in the well. Didn't even that. And you know, as a caster, that's what's funny. Like you hear Roshan <laughs> die, you immediately look over to the left to see who got it. And I'm looking. It's like, uh, uh, who got it? <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting there for a while. But that's a rebuy from yeah, the thing about that was like the two heroes initiated on the Roshan pit, and the thing about PL is. He needs time to build his army before he does a lot of damage. And we're going to have a disruption there. 
Little RNG luck, perhaps. Mech's gonna be used. Two racks might be a bit too much, and Trixie gonna drop the cogs as best he can. Good Illuminate caught everyone. Loda is in feeble. Let's see if they can re-engage. They will. Going on Loda. S4 is real low, trying to spin away. Can they catch him? He is gonna make it to the low ground. Trixie's now in trouble. Caught with a split earth. He's gonna be cleaned up. In the meantime, no tail gets to kill Bulldog. Now the target. Loda's going one-on-one -on -one with Era. It's a battle of the titans. This Era and Loda go one-on-one. -on -one. Spirit Land spin on a target, but now Loda not giving up the ghost. Still chasing him down. No tail manages to notch another kill in the meantime. He's got help with Fly. And Fly will be enough to force Loda to think better of it. He backs out. Buyback from Bulldog. Loda being kited out. And let's see how they want to treat this. No Tail's going to be silenced. Loda trying to heal up off of him. We'll have the Aegis pop. Bulldog's going to land in the meantime. Bulldog goes under cover of Shadow Blade. He has a mech up if he wants to use it. The racks are still standing. So Loda putting that Aegis to good use. Couldn't find the target. Now the re-engagement on the Bulldog. Bulldog's down below half health. He might be cleaned up. Mex is himself trying to get out of trouble. Will end up dying. Fnatic able to hold the line. They lose the tier three, they lose a ranged racks, but the more important of the two racks, the melee racks, still standing. Yeah, that was really confusing why they split the fight up like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they ended up on top lane, I guess chasing the peel around, but if they wouldn't have chased that peel and just went straight back to mid lane, maybe they could have got the, me uh, the melee racks instead of the ranged one there. Which is pretty huge. Structural damage right now for lines is what's going to win them the game, not farming or getting kills. Right. We can see the PL has taken a pretty significant lead in net worth. 3k ahead of the Life Stealer as well as the Juggernaut. However, the top two of the top three do belong to Alliance, but they've got a Storm Sphere nipping at their heels. Let's look at the items following that. Four staff is done. And, you, and this is where, you know, I, uh, another thing that worries me for Alliance. Life Stealer is one of those heroes who gets worse in a lot of ways as the game goes when the supports get their items. Four staff and Ghost Scepter make, make his life miserable. And we're beginning to see almost every support from Fnatic get something along those lines. We see the Ghost Scepter 4 staff up on the Keeper of the Life. Phantom Lancer is a different, but you've got a Ghost Scepter up on the Clockwork. Bane has a Ghost Scepter on the side of Alliance. Basher now up on the side of S4, or in the inventory of S4. BKB is done on Leshrac as well. The Assault Cuirass complete on Lifestealer. And they're going to... This feels, you know, it's a, it feels like a moment of desperation, and it might well be. But they've got to try to make something happen. Bulldog's going to TPN, go under Shadow Blade, and they're going to try to get a pick here. Trixie is the obvious target. Incoming. Sitting here in mid, they're going to go ahead and look to poke up the steps, and they're going to grab Era. Era's the perfect target. They get the Demonic Purge off on him. Can they get him? Split Earth, and he's Silas. If they can get Era, the game could end. Mechs are going to be used. Era is going to be cleaned up. Don't know that he has buyback. We'll find out in a moment. No tail in the meantime. Going to be the next on the list of casualties. Hotty trying to feed script. Just can't get the job done. No tail re-engages. Bouncing around with the BKB, but the damage just not enough. Era still down. Era does not have buyback. He cannot get back up. And look oh, like they were going to get Storm, too. That, that's the game. It has to be. There's no buyback in air, and no tail just bought back. So they're not going to have Storm or Peel for this fight. Two desperately needed heroes. And I think they're, they're just going to have to call it GG now. Yep. We're about to see Mega Creeps come out. Congrats, says Fnatic. And Alliance. In very impressive fashion. Two to nothing. They punch their ticket to Shanghai. The G1 Live Land Finals. We've got one of our two finalist teams determined. What a fantastic series. And, you know, they were really up against it. I, you know, I think both of us, again, talking about it towards the end. If that smoke, do let's say that smoke doesn't work there, Fear. The I feel like their game is effectively almost over at that point, barring a miracle. Like, if they smoke in right there and they lose a hero or two instead of having it work out the way it did, can you see them bouncing back from that? Um, if they would have lost heroes there and not taken a decent trade, yeah, it, the game would have been very, very difficult for them to take back into control. So yeah, that was a huge gank, and it's a miracle that they managed to find air out of everyone, out of position there. 44 minutes, 46 seconds, the official game time. 23 to 32, the final kill score. And once again, I'll go ahead and bring up our bracket so people can see where things stand. That's our winner's bracket finals in the books. Fnatic will fall to meet Team Liquid. Still having a chance for either of those teams to qualify, but for now. The streamers, the ticker tape parade, you name it, everything deserving for Alliance, who has earned their way to the grand finals in Shanghai at the G1 Champions League, coming out of our Western qualifier, our first place finishers in the winner's bracket. 
I'll tell you what, Fear. Break it down for me as we get ready to say goodbye. Final thoughts on this match and the performance we just saw out of Alliance. Oh, well, the first thing is Alliance, once again, great, great team strategy. They can always come up with unique ways to win games, and this is another one, just EGM and Aki running around the map, destroying it, and having these cute little push heroes that just coddle, countered the coddle. It was well thought out strategy by them, so you got to give them props for that. One thing that probably was hurting Fnatic a little bit, as I have to say, maybe Hani not being in Europe right now, hurt them a bit because you don't usually him see him always playing on the support role and I think he's forced to do that due to latency issues. So I don't feel like Fnatic was playing their top game, but Alliance definitely was. Once again, Alliance manages to find their way through the Western Qualifier, finish in first place, and they'll be flying to Shanghai for the finals coming up at the end of May. Fear, my friend, thank you so much again for joining us for the broadcast. I was scheduled to have Brax uh, on the line today for both series, and he unfortunately had some unexpected travel come up, and you filled in at the last second. Thanks so much, my friend. Had a lot of fun, as always. Absolutely. It's always fun to cast these type of high-stakes matches, so anytime in the future I'm available, I'm down to cast. You got it, brother. Go ahead and plug yourself. Where can they find out more about you? Uh, you can find me at Fear Dota on Twitter and on Facebook, and I do stream on Twitch occasionally, and you can find me there at Fear Darkness. Once again, EG Zone Fear. Hope to see you again in the future. Enjoy your evening, my friend. Absolutely. You too, AC.